Welcome to Breaking Free Revival Center. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Where our slogan here is where heaven touches earth. Amen. Amen. Today Amen. is healing and miracles, signs, and wonders, Amen. okay? Anyone out there that is needing healing and wholeness, I want you to share families. Amen. Share this Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Um, I have many, many prayer requests already. And so we're going to get to worship and praise. But let's open up in prayer here. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Thank you for this opportunity to glorify your name, Lord. Amen. We yield you. ourselves before you, God, and we say, Lord, have your way in this house, Lord. Yes. Father, it is all about you. Yes, we Lord. thank you that you thank are the you, King Lord. of Help Kings, us. the Lord of Lords, the great Help I us. am, Father, and we exalt you today, Lord. So, Father, thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we have a treat today, you all. We have Rick here, Peterson, and guess who? Pastor Jimmy Foote. Yahoo! Miracle from heaven, and Marcus Foote here. And Amen. so I want you to stand in the name of Jesus, even at your home, and worship with us in Jesus' name. So take it away, you all. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own In brokenness and pain you are my hope My firm foundation My firm foundation Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I No longer has a place to hide And I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance Cause there's in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand your love, my fear, doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in Again, there's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. One more time. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't Stand a 
chance. Our fears do not stand a chance when we stand in your love. Lord, your words to us are, fear not. Don't be afraid. You have tribulation, sure. But don't be afraid. You have me. <laughs> and I'm the overcomer. And in me you overcome. So thank you, Lord, that we don't have to listen to fear, give way to fear, think about fear. It's all replaced by your love and our faith in you and our trust in you. Thank you, Lord. Your, your love for us is beyond our comprehension that you should love us why you should love us how you love us and Lord the world gets in tries to mess up those thoughts and just just turn everything into goulash but Lord you speak through that and say I love you 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 He is jealous for me, loved like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. Oh, how he loves us, oh. Oh, how he loves us, how he loves us, oh. He loves like a hurricane, I am a tree Bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me our pride, drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes. If grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. Then heaven meets earth like a passionate kiss, and my heart beats violently inside of my chest. I don't have time for these useless regrets when I think about the way us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us oh he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he How he loves us. Oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Praise your name, Lord. We worship you for your love. Constant, Lord, like a 
child who has no idea the love his parents have for him. He's just surrounded by it. He's hugged by it. He's changed diapers by it. Every minute of the day he's surrounded by it. Lord, slowly he grows to realize just how great the love there is coming from his parents. And Lord, that's us. Lord, every day we get another little bit more of an idea of how great your love is for us and it wins our hearts wins our obedience wins our affection and lord tonight it wins our worship thank you lord in jesus name thank you rick praise god somebody of what they think you're like I heard your tender whispers of love in the dead of night when you tell me that you're near and that I'm never alone your good good father is who you are is who you are it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers far and wide. I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide Cause you know just what I need Before we, we say a word You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us let's sing that again you are perfect you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us Love so undeniable I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I can hardly take and you call me deeper still yes you call me Deeper still, yes, you call me. Deeper still into love, love, love. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father who you are who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am who I am cause you're perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to Lord, you are perfect, perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are good, good. You're a good, good father. I'm 
I'm loved, loved, loved by you. Love, love, love by you, Jesus. By you, Father. Love, love, love by you. You're a good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, I'm loved by you, who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, your good, good father. You're a good, good father. Amen. Praise God. We're going to continue to worship the Lord, but I want to just couple, touch on a couple of things. Because I know that God has a word for you, wants to prepare you for some things today. And I'm going to step over to the pulpit. Thanks, Rick. Thank you to Rick Peterson. You're going to be seeing more from him in the weeks to come because, amen, I appreciate his gift in his heart and the willingness to step up. And Rick is part of the prayer hub of Fresno. We have some of the members here and uh, some of our buddies there. Hey, Elijah, how you doing, Prophet? <laughs> Good to see you, Steve. Good to see you, God bless you, man. God bless you guys. Good to see you, Laura and Judy and everyone else who's here. Of course, my good friend and one of my oldest Fresno friends, Sylvia, is here. And, and um, not to go off too far off on a tangent, Sylvia, but I remember about 14 or more years ago. No, more than that. It was like 18 years ago, I think. And we did, um, I was new in town, and we were working with Naomi, and we went to the women's prison. And we began to talk, you and I, and uh, this is a woman after God's heart. Then she met my wife, and she was, her ministry gift was kind of released through Pastor Lana's ministry, Mighty Women of God. And now she is one of the leading uh, intercessors and, and Christian leaders in our city. Can I say that? I guess I can say that, right? I've already said it. <laughs> Praise God. So uh, we do have a number of people here who are committed to something revival in the land. And um, I didn't want to teach too much about revival specifically. But I did have a, a scripture or two I want to share with you. Does everybody have their Bible? Yeah. All right, speak up now. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. You're a good, good Father, Lord. How you love us. And we love you in response to the love you have shown us. You've loved us so much you haven't abandoned us to our own devices. Otherwise, we would have nothing to sing about. We would be doomed to an eternity without you, God. That place is known as hell. But Lord Jesus, you said... You are preparing a place for us. In your Father's house, there are many rooms, many mansions, and you have prepared and are preparing some place for us for all eternity, and we rejoice in that. And so, God, no matter what battles we face, what issues we face, we thank you, we bless your holy name, and we ask you to manifest yourself today not just for the sake of those gathered, but for those who are viewing online and for those who are suffering, those who feel rejected, those who are abandoned, those who are questioning, those who are in doubt and fear, Lord God, those who are being tormented right now, we pray for them. 
and for someone who just may have chanced upon this channel on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you are, you don't know me and I don't know you, but God knows you. And I want you to know that today the Holy Spirit has come to nestle you in his loving arms. And today is your day of breakthrough. And that's why you are tuned in right now. And for those of you who may know us and you're on and you, who knows why, but maybe you're just being faithful because this is your church. God is well pleased that you have set aside time, even on the Internet, to be here to be with us, and there's a special blessing for you. Amen? So, Father, we just thank you. Do what you will in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I thank you for the warm welcome. Most of you know I'm on sabbatical right now, but it's good to show up every once in a while to let you be reminded that Pastor Lana has a husband, and it's Pastor Jimmy. Amen? Amen. And she has been doing a wonderful job in maintaining the church and uh, fulfilling the call of ministry that's upon her life. Boy, I could talk about my wife for a long time because she's not only my wife, she's my partner in ministry. And I was telling our son, who's right here, our, our third son, our youngest son is Marcus playing drums. Hey, Marcus. Amen. And I told him, we got to move the drum set over here so when you get the Holy Ghost, people can see you shake. So... <laughs> Amen. So, uh, but he's not only uh, literally, but, but figuratively behind his dad. Amen. Uh, my son supports our ministry, and I'm so blessed to have this young man. And uh, amen. So let's uh, very quickly, just a couple of scriptures, and then I want to share something else with you. Um, Romans 8, 31. Let me start with that one. What then shall we say in response to these things if God is for us? Who can be against us? Amen? Deuteronomy 3, 22, NIV version, by the way. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself for, will fight for you. Somebody say, God is fighting for me. God fights my battles. And I just want to share a couple of things that, that I have been looking at uh, today in the last few days. Now, for those of you who don't know, I, um, I am taking a sabbatical, not simply because I needed a Sabbath, a lengthy Sabbath rest, but because I'm fighting a health challenge. Most of you know this, but for those who don't know, um, I am about to... Uh, take my second round of chemotherapy this Friday. I am fighting stage four cancer. And I had to grip my faith. I had to take a hold of the promises of God because, you know, when people say, when the doctor says, hey, the PET scan says this and the blood test says that and the MRI says this, and you're going, wow, this is the specter of death that's presented to you, amen? And some of us know what that's like because there are people here who have faced death, maybe facing those issues, but I refuse to call it facing death. I'm facing life. I'm holding on to life because my Lord is Jesus, the Lord of life. Amen? Amen. But death is a reality for us. And so when we face a Goliath as David did, 1 Samuel chapter 17, when you're facing a Goliath who's threatening you, you got to know on whom word you stand. Do you stand on the word of the government? Do you stand on your own experience, your own intellect? Or do you stand on the word of the living God? Amen? So David said in 1 Samuel 17, um, 58. In fact, let me just turn there. So I want to quote David because I love David. Most of you do. Um, David, by the way, we know more about him than just about anybody else in Scripture. So I don't know why Hollywood can't get it right when they make a David movie. You know what I'm saying? They just mess it up big time. Somebody needs to make a David movie and study the Bible and do it right. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's just one of my peccadillos, I guess. So you know that uh, David was facing uh, Goliath. But here's the part that I love. Um, after the story that you know, and I'm not going to reiterate the entire story, finally David is facing 
Goliath in the valley of Elah. And the Philistine army is behind the, their champion, Goliath, over there. Remember, Goliath is about nine and a half feet tall. I'm not, not kidding. If he was in the NBA, he'd take the ball and he would just do like that every play, just stuff it. That's how tall he was. He was a big strapping man, a proven champion. And here was David, this little shepherd boy, about yay big, ruddy and handsome, but with a mountainous faith, a great faith. And he told this Philistine, and he said in verse 45 of 1 Samuel 17, David said to the Philistine, Goliath, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. That's the Lord Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. You see, Goliath cursed our God, and David was incensed when he heard this uncircumcised Philistine giant um, curse his God. And now David says, this day, verse 46, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. I love that. That's one of my favorite scriptures. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47, now listen to this. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Somebody say, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. If you're facing a battle today, I want you to be reminded that God has gone before you. He is for you. Whether your battle is like mine, cancer, or some other dreaded disease or chronic ailment, whether your battle is divorce, you may be going through right now. Seems like somebody's always going through that. Maybe your battle is of the emotional realm. Maybe your battle is in your social realm. Maybe your battle is finances, debt, lack of money. Maybe your battle is loneliness. Who knows what it may be? Maybe you have enemies who physically want to attack you. I was talking to one of the brothers in the church, and because of a, a challenge he's facing, he's getting death threats. Now, I know that maybe somebody's been mad at you before and cussed you out, but has anybody here ever received a death threat from someone, send you a letter or an email or something, and they say they're going to kill you for something you did? And so this brother and I prayed, and as we were praying, he just broke down because the pressure was so much and so intense, a death threat. That's a Goliath in your life. But David knew where he was standing on, on the rock of salvation. And when we say salvation, we're talking about not just the salvation of our souls and our spirits into eternal life, but the salvation of our life, of our physical being. You know, the Bible says that Jesus took upon himself all the stripes, the 49 lashes, or 39 lashes, for our sicknesses and infirmities as well. By his stripes, we are healed. Amen? But it's important to remember that Jesus died not just that we would have eternal life in the next life, but that we would have the grace of eternal life in this life. The Bible says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. It will give life to your mortal body, not your immortal body. Amen? The immortal, we know we're going to be with Jesus, but what about this life? Trust me, I know what I'm talking about, folks, because I'm holding fast to Jesus. Because he's the Lord of life. If I hold on to his garment, I know that no matter what cancer says or does or what kind of chemicals they pump into my veins, I got Jesus. And I got a grip on the Holy Ghost. Amen? Come on, Elijah. Elijah, too, is facing that challenge. And when we hold fast to Jesus, his life flows into us just as it flowed into the woman with the issue of blood. Amen? I know she was touching a physical Jesus. But I'm touching Jesus by faith. And God rewards those who diligently seek him by faith. Amen? So I know, I know 
where my life is coming from. And I want you all to know it as well, that no matter what you're facing today, or maybe you're in the time of respite, a time of relaxation and rest. Maybe the battles are behind you, and you're in this place right now. You're kind of like in between the waves. You know, the sea has these waves, and there's sometimes we're standing on the beach, maybe in Hawaii, Pastor Lana and our family, we have a favorite beach we go to in, in um, Oahu. And it's really quiet and we pretty much have it all to ourselves, except some crabs and fish here and there, right? And you watch the waves come in and they're very gentle waves in most parts of Hawaii. And they're very gentle, but every seventh wave or so, it's a big wave. And that's kind of how life is. Things can kind of float around, you kind of, bouncing up and down gently on the waves. Then all of a sudden this big wave comes in, just hits you. It's your kid getting sick. It's this big bill you can't pay. It's your house catching on fire. It's your parents getting old. It's decisions you have to make about family and issues and goliaths and issues just come into your life. But where are you standing? Well, you gotta stand on the promises of God. The battle is the Lord's. God has taken up your battle. He's already foreseen it, and that's why the Bible often says, and it came to pass, and that's how we have to look at our lives, that it comes to pass. It's not here forever. Man, I'm looking at cancer, and I said, man, my 66th year on this planet has sucked in a lot of ways. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Didn't see it coming, didn't expect it. But I know it has come to pass. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. In fact, the light is already shining brightly. I came to tell you that tonight. My wife said last week, she said, you know, you should really think about coming because I've been feeling really good lately and uh, been feeling strong. I said, you know what, I, I just want to come and testify and just share a little bit because you guys have been praying. I know you've been praying for me and uh, lifting me before the Lord. I want you to know your prayers work. And friends at home, if you need prayer, you make sure you tell Pastor Lana on Facebook right now. You go to Facebook, if you're not there, if you're on YouTube, go to Facebook. If you're on Facebook, type in your prayer need right now so we can bring you before the Lord because God is doing miracles. I'm one of them. Amen? Because I know what he said. He said the battle is the Lord's. He said that in several other places. He said to Moses at the Red Sea, when Pharaoh's army was behind Israel chasing them and they were up against the Red Sea. The Red Sea isn't like, you know, Shaver Lake, right? It's, no, this is a big old sea that's in front of them. And the people who have just left Egypt, they're looking behind them and there's Pharaoh. But there's also something else behind them. There's a pillar of the glory of God that's separating, come on now, separating the, the Egyptian army and holding them at bay while the children of Israel are wondering what to do next. And the Lord says in Exodus chapter 14, he says, don't worry, I'm going to deal with the Egyptians. The battle belongs to me. Now, Moses, take your staff, strike that water, and part the waters, and that's what he did. And he said, get going across the water. And maybe, maybe I emphasize that because God is saying to somebody, get going. The resources are before you. The door is before you. But you are frozen in fear and doubt. But God says, get going. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody. You feel like your back is up against the Red Sea, up against the wall. But God has provided a way out, just as he promised, because the battle belongs to him. Now get going. Get off your blessed assurance and get moving. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Amen. I know when the Holy Ghost is talking to someone. And so the children went across the Red Sea. But what happened to Pharaoh's army? God lifted up his glory, the pillar, and the, they went across to chase him. And God closed in the waters and drowned 
the entire Egyptian army, just devastating. What was the greatest civilization of that day was devastated by those 11 catastrophes. 10 of those things that happened those plagues that happened in Egypt, and now the final blow was the destruction of Pharaoh's army at the Red Sea. Why? The battle is the Lord's. And I want you to know that because God did it this way, all the nations of the world, all the civilizations heard about the God of Israel. And so when Israel was going through the wilderness, they were freaking people out because people heard about the God who fought the battles of the Israelites, and they were afraid. And by the time Joshua took over for Moses, the people on the other side of the Jordan, in Jericho and Ai, the Gibeonites, and the, so the electric lights, the Ammonites, the Hittites, the Hivites, etc., they all knew who this God was. Why? Because of what he did. To Egypt, And how many of you have a testimony, something like that? God parted the waters for you. God destroyed your enemies. Let me tell you a quick story. I used to work at this hospital. And, you know, I'm a nice guy, but sometimes I don't, I don't get along with people because maybe I'm too nice. Maybe I got too much Jesus in me. You all know what I'm talking about? Sometimes the people just don't like you. They don't treat you right. So there's this guy who wasn't treating me right. We worked in the same department. We pretty much had the same job. But he got some kind of snit up his butt because he didn't like me for whatever reason. And so I said, listen, we got to go talk about this. So I went outside with him. I said, let's go outside and talk. And he thought maybe we might fight. We're at work. And I said, listen, listen, my friend, I'm a man of God. I told him, he went, what? I said, I'm a man of God. So I, I, I prefer to get along with you, but don't mess with me because God's on my side. And he was like, he was kind of fussing and huffing. So well, he still treated me a little mean. But what happened the next day, he got a nosebleed. And he couldn't come to work. So he couldn't come to work on Friday, and his nose kept bleeding. He couldn't come to work on Saturday. His nose kept bleeding. On Sunday, his nose was still bleeding. Monday, he came to work, and he said, Jimmy, I'm sorry. God will fight your battles for you. I didn't have to do anything but pray for the brother. That's all I had to do. And this is what I'm telling you. God will fight your battles. Now, we're told by the apostles, Peter and um, also by Paul, said don't, don't be in sin and expect God to back you up. Amen? Do what Jesus said. Pray for your enemies. Pray for the situation. Let God be part of it. But then trust him. You know, you have more power. This is, I'm going to go off somewhere that I think maybe somebody needs to hear, but I want you to hear this. We are le living in a tumultuous racial climate right now, are we not? I want to talk a lot about the race issue, except to say this. There is something hanging over my head because of the color of my skin, and that's the word minority. The word minority says there's few of you and many of us. It's one of those words, right? Kind of like what, what um, uh, King Jehoshaphat had to deal with when Sennacherib came against him. This huge army. And Sennacherib had already destroyed many nations. And as he bragged, hey, their God couldn't save them, and your God can't save you, no matter what your king, Hezekiah, I believe it was, in those days, said. But God said, don't worry, Hezekiah. <laughs> don't worry, you guys. I'm going to fight the battle for you. Amen? And so this huge army fought itself. They were thrown in confusion, and they destroyed itself. And the children of Israel, all they did was sing songs and rejoice in the Lord because God fights the battle. And see, as a man of color, as a black man, I've heard this from the world. You're a minority. But see, when you are linked with Jesus... You're a majority. You're a majority. I don't care if there's a million of them and only one of you. If you are connected with the Lord, if you got your grip on Jesus' hand, if he's in your heart, if you got the Holy Ghost in you, you are not a minority and you are not powerless and you are not a weakling and you are not unable. And I don't care what the statistics say. Listen, I can plug it in like you can on Google. And I can look at every statistic 
that says something about me as a man, as a black man, as a Christian man, as an American, as a whatever you can name, and find something negative. But whose report will you believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. Amen? God says you are more than a conqueror. God says he's always leading you into triumph. God says he's going to fight your battles. God says he'll never leave or forsake you. God says he loves you from the beginning to end, from womb to tomb, and then on into eternal life. Amen? God says he's going to show out and show up so that your enemies will know there is a God in your life. Amen? And I bet you that enemy of mine at the hospital, we became friends, by the way. And I could tell a couple more stories like that. But because I trusted God to fight my battles, God did it in his own unique way. And I bet to this day that man, if he ain't saved, he still remembers his encounter with Jimmy Foote, the man of God. Amen? Just as they're going to remember you, when you hold up the, the banner, Jehovah Nisi, wherever you go, and they see that there's something in the way you walk, something in the way you talk, something in your steady gaze that says you are walking with Jesus. There's something of great power within you. It's not the color of your skin. It's not the degree on your wall. It's not the money in your bank account. It's not your pedigree, your name, the tradition behind you. No, it's something that you have that everybody who's willing can have. That's a walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God has for you. And that's what he has for me. And when you face Goliath, you remember this, the battle is the Lord's. Marcus, come on up, please. The battle is the Lord's. Praise God. I want to give you an assignment. Amen. I want to give you an assignment. And in those quiet times in your life, in these next few days, I want you to open your Bible and look at the places in Scripture where God says, I will go before you. I will deal with your enemies and let that word dwell within you richly. Let it permeate your being. Let it pierce the doubts and that hard shell of anxiety that may surround you. Because God, he wants to do things that cause people to rejoice and brag and boast about him. How many have found that out? God wants to do something that you just jump up and you'll grab your phone and you'll call somebody and say, look what God just did. God wants us to brag about the love he's shown us, the grace and the mercies that he's revealed to us. Amen. Can somebody take that assignment on? This is a Bible study tonight. And I, I you know, I'm going to play the teacher. Your homework. Find the scripture that speaks to you about God's protection, his defense. And also add to that something that you're not going through because God intervened. You ever worry about something coming up and then all of a sudden God just intervenes and that you wasted worry on it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything give thanks to God because God's gonna deal with your battles, amen? Praise God. Well, I wanna share something with you. Um, I promised myself that if I was going to take a sabbatical and I was going to uh, spend a lot of time away from ministry and church, rest my body, heal up, I was going to do one thing, write a bunch of songs. So I've been writing about four or five songs a week which is fun. I mean, I just love it. And um, I wrote this one the other day. So Marcus, you going to help me on this? All right. Remember, we'll glue it. We turn our eyes to you And we remember all you've done to prove 
the battle is the Lord's. Our enemies are strong, but we stand before them fearless and unmoved. The battle is the Lord. Open our eyes to the chariots of fire. Open our ears till we hear the trumpet sound. Open our mouths till praise is overflowing. Cause we are going on to victory. The battle is the Lord. The battle is the Lord's. We lift our hands to you. We are your children. You are our Father. And the battle is the Lord's. Open our eyes to the chariots of fire. Open our ears till we hear the trumpet sound. Open our mouths to praise is overflowing. Cause we are going on to victory. Open our hearts and fill us with your spirit. Open our Till understanding comes Open our lips To tell our testimony By the blood of the Lamb We have overcome belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. Come on, tell the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle the battle belongs, the battle belongs to the Lord, to the Lord. Amen. I want you to be encouraged. That this is how we fight our battle. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Jesus. It may look like I'm 
surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by... Sing with me. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. 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 <laughs> Amen. This is how we fight. It. Pastor Lana, come forward, please. Because there's some people who have given prayer requests, I'm assuming, because we asked you to do that. We want to pray for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's many out there, and I want to speak to Teresa in Manteca. Her brother is battling cancer, and, you know, she just showed me a picture of how he looks and how he lost so much weight. But, Teresa, I just want to just touch and agree with you tonight as we have intercessors here. He's needing a miracle from heaven Amen. And he lives in Texas. So we are going to touch and agree. And I know you're carrying the battle. And you're carrying the burden of your brother. But I feel like God says he is going to be, Mike is going to be a miracle for Jesus. So Father, we lift up Mike to you, God, in Texas, Lord. And I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, your word says that you bored every sickness, healed every disease. And by the stripes of Jesus, Lord, Mike is healed and made whole, God. I pray that you will continue to give him favor with the doctors and nurses and to aid him to health and healing right now in Jesus' name. And Father, thank you, God that we can bring this request made known to you, God. And in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for what you are doing in Mike's life, Lord. We proclaim, Father, even with Jimmy, is dealing with stage four cancer, Lord. All the people that is walking out this miracle like Pastor Jimmy, God. That is a miracle from you, Lord. And we give you praise and honor, God. Everybody's asking, how is Pastor Jimmy doing? And it is, he's here. And I just know, God, that's God. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is in his studio just worshiping God. I'm here in this sanctuary, sanctuary just crying out to God saying, Lord, you're going to give us the strength and the endurance and that place of perseverance that no matter what doctors say, we're going to stand on the promises of God and you too out there. We're going to stand with you because we know that God is a miraculous God. He can heal. He can make whole in Jesus' name. He is our ultimate physician in Jesus' name. And so we just thank you, Father, for these families. And I'm just going to say their name. Donna in Bakersfield and Judy here and Laura and Laura Tamayo's um, 
actually daughter-in-law we're gonna proclaim healing for Frankie in the name of Jesus Esmeralda's father uncle and son in the name of Jesus Jenny in the name of Jesus we are proclaiming um, um, Jimmy and Gabe and Israel we just proclaim father the healing touch from heaven right now in jesus name and even miss amelia that is here and aunt candy that is here in jesus name father deborah and shirley and rita lord god vanetta god we thank you lord for the healing touch right now, Father. Pour out your spirit, Lord. This service is dedicated for you to, Father, just pour out your healing balm of Gilead. Be poured upon these people right now in Jesus' name. And I just thank you. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you, Father, that you are doing miracles signs and wonders Lord God and we exalt your name and we thank you for what you are doing right now in Jesus name thank you for these intercessors that have come God that we can father just be in agreement Lord that these people your son your daughter will be healed and made whole in Jesus name and father thank you for Benjamin too Lord we thank you, Father, for the healing touch right now. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, yes. Father, heal him and make him whole in Jesus' name. I just want to give a personal word to Benjamin. Benjamin is uh, one of our servant leaders, and he has been struck with some kind of sickness. And I proclaim that this sickness has come to pass because again God is fighting this battle for you and don't cling to any doubts about your own self-worth because in the Lord's eyes because you are bathed in the blood of the Lamb you are in the righteousness of God in Christ this is not a punishment this is not because God is mad at you or you've done anything wrong this is just part of what happens when you live in a fallen world. But God is going to show himself mighty on your behalf, Benjamin. You trust him. Drink some water, some hot tea. Take care of yourself. Don't worry about your job. Don't worry about missing out on anything. God says this is a season of rest and reconnection with him. Rediscover the healing power of the Most High God. In the name of Jesus, amen. I think we should, uh, did you want to receive an offering right now, Pastor Lana? I just looked up and she was gone. She was over there, so I think she's just going to let me do whatever I want to do. Which yes. I have the right to do whatever I want, right? <laughs> well, it's vacation. so nice, right, that Pastor Jimmy is here. Praise God. It's a miracle for me, right? Because when doctors give you a bad report and you see your husband walking through this place of testing and God is intervening while he's worshiping God, only God can do that. Amen pouring out his healing touch so i am just so encouraged that you all here are agreeing with us in jesus name and i just want to say thank you thank you for uplifting uplifting our arms right at this moment i just appreciate your faith here that these intercessors have come and say no matter what we are going to trust god we're going to claim his word we're going to know he can do anything in jesus name so i appreciate that we need prayer <laughs> i always say now okay family we need prayer <laughs> but anyway we are going to move into that place of giving Every time I say this is that if you have a need, you just sow that seed. Amen. It's just the what, what God does. Um, you just give what you have in your hands and you watch and see what God will do. 
He does supernatural things for his glory and praise. Amen. Amen. Come on up. And then we also have online giving. the water with me come on and walk on the water with me you will not fail you will not fail come on and walk on the water with me come on and walk on the water with me you will not fail you will not fail you will not fail you will not fail you got to rise up don't be afraid I'll fight that battle before you Be strong, call on my name No weapon formed against you will prosper No weapon formed against you will prevail Come on and walk on the water with me On and walk on the water with me you will not fail You will not fail Come on and walk on the water with me Y'all sing along Come on and walk on the water with me You will not fail That's right, Laura, sing it to somebody You will not fail Come on, sing it to me you will not fail, and I'll sing it back to you. You will not fail. Now this is what the Lord says. He says, rise up, don't be afraid. I'll fight the battle before you. Be strong, call on my name. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon formed against you will prevail You've got to rise up Don't be afraid I'll fight the battle before you Be strong Call on my name No weapon formed against you will prosper No weapon formed against you will prevail no weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon formed against you will prevail. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon formed against you will prevail. Come on and walk on the water with me. Come on and walk on the water with me. You will not fail 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You will not fail. We Praise will not God. fail. So let's lift up these tithe and offering. Father, I thank you, God, for the financial blessing, Lord. Bless your people. 30, 60, 100 forward turn into their deepest need, Lord. And you know what's placed on their hearts. And in Jesus' name, God, you make a way when man says there is no way, Father. And I just thank you, Father. For this place of giving, you do what it you want it to do, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I always want to open this time up for the intercessors in this city. Amen. If you have a word, you have to want to pray for something or somebody, because see, God brought you all here for a reason. Amen. Hermanita, you know, <laughs> if you have anything, Miss Laura and brothers here and Judy or Miss Deborah, we are here unified. Any of you up there as well, Charlotte or Raina? You know, we are here united as one. Miss Amelia, I want to pray for you, Miss Amelia. God is doing a miracle for your physical body in the name of Jesus. Amen. He is doing something even greater. So, Father, I just uplift up Miss Amelia. She comes all the way from Fireball here, God. And I ask that you will bless her, Father. Heal her body. Make her whole in Jesus' name. Thank you for what she done all the time in the secret place, Lord, with you, Father. And I pray what is hidden, what is behind the scene is going to reward her openly, Lord. So bless her today and Aunt Candy as well, Father, as they have come diligently, Lord. Just, Father, just between you and them, Lord, bless them tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Miss Laura, do you have anything? I'm, I'm mulling in the spirit here for a minute. Amen. The last couple of weeks, well, and I wasn't here last week, but I, I keep hearing the word that um, Job was healed when he prayed for his friends. And that this will continue to be a house of healing because in this time of your suffering, you have not uh, gone into yourself. You have not had woe unto yourself, but you have remained outward and prayed for your friends. And so, Lord, I just thank you that Amen. this is going to be a healing house. Yes, Lord, sir. that the spirit is right, that there's a spirit of deep intercession that's here, Father God. And so we just come into agreement with what you're wanting to do in this place, and we thank you, Father God that you have so found a beautiful servanthood in both Lana and both in Jimmy, Father God. So if we could just raise our hands together, Lord, we just pray favor and your blessing over this house, Father God, that the joy of your presence that's here, that it would increase, that it will draw many. Lord, the vision that they have had, that it would come to pass, that the time is now and the time is right. Lord, that Fresno would receive breaking free revival. And so we all say, let it begin with us. And we thank you, Father God, for this foundation that you are building here that is strong and true. Lord, build upon it, build upon it, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Miss Laura. Who is it? Come up here. Come up here, Miss Deborah. Hallelujah. These are all intercessors. <laughs> Stand in the gap for us. Ooh. Oh, man, the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. I, I just want to praise the Lord because when I look at my pastor, I see a healed man. I don't see no sick man. Amen. And I just praise God. Hallelujah. I praise God, you know, because I know he's healed. You know, and 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 I I, I cover you in the morning time. And I pray for all your organs in your body. That whatever this chemo is, that it will not destroy none of the rest of your organs, your veins, and none of that will take place. Because God is good. Amen. God is good. And I've just been glorifying him, thanking him, you know, for his healing and his deliverance and, and God. And I just see it. I see it. I Hallelujah. don't see no sick man. I'm sorry. Amen. I don't. And so glory to Hallelujah. God. I give him all praise and glory, you know. But I have a testimony. The Lord been trying to get me to speak forth, you know. You know, God is so good. He's so good. 
and there's none like him. And even when I go through my trials and my tests, and, and, but my eyes stay focused on Jesus and not the problem. And I just thank him that I have grown to this part far where by faith, faith has brought me through and believing and trusting in God for who he is. You know, it's no limits to what God can do. It's no limits. Oh, hallelujah. Come Thank on. you, Come Jesus. On. Oh, God, we know, Lord God, that you are a real God. And you are a good, good God. And you want to bless your people. And you want them to trust you, no matter what the situation may be in their lives, Lord God. And I know that you are God of deliverance. I know you are God that can heal. I know God that you can set free any drug addict, any addiction that one might have. Tonight can be set free. Just believe because Jesus said who the Son set free is free indeed. And so, Lord, I thank you, Lord, tonight. Those that are out there on YouTube, Lord God, Facebook Life, Lord God. You have already answered their prayers. You already have right there. That's all they have to do. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk like a healed person. Walk like a person that's been delivered. Walk in it. Trust him. He will set you free and he surely will heal you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for every test, every trial that I face, Lord God. And Lord, I go, I'm going to see the other end of what I'm going through because I know the battle. I heard that three times in the last two days. The battle is yours. It's not mine. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord God. You're fighting this battle that I'm going through. In Jesus' name, and I praise you and glorify you. I can just shout hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo. All right. Anybody? Anybody else? Come on up here, Rick. <laughs> Hallelujah. It doesn't matter to the Lord if there are many or there are few. What matters is there's some. <laughs> and we are some. Sometimes we're smaller than others, but don't, don't think, don't wait for somehow a big mass of movement to start or something just man if you got it in your heart and you find one other person who has it in their heart and it says where two are gathered in your name he's there because just two is the lowest possible fulfillment of his intention for all of the planet and all of mankind to come together and you know, when a man and woman come together and two little cells come together, it's the beginning of a new life. And that's what the Lord is doing. And we're here and we are committed. We're committed because we believe that, that Jimmy's healing and the manifestation of it, and the reality of it, has more to do than just with his life. But it's what the Lord is doing uh, in our city. And we are not a collection of churches who come together. We, we are members of a body finally coming together to be the church that we already are. And so uh, I just am very encouraged. And sometimes people tell me to act at my age, but I am my age. I mean, I, uh, my age is somewhere between 17 and 25. That's <laughs> what I feel like. And uh, because the Lord said, I will renew your youth like eagles. So, and it's happening. Because there's so much life in the Lord that when we give ourselves to the Lord, to relate to the Lord, to come to the Lord, to spend time with the Lord, His Spirit gives life to our mortal bodies. And uh, we end up being and doing and saying and feeling and believing things that we wouldn't otherwise. So, God's up to something. Stay tuned. Amen. Amen. All right. Anybody else?
<laughs> well, I'm going to hold it for you. Okay? This is... Um, My name is Stoney. Stoney. Uh, Stoney. Ray Thomas. And praise God. Today, I do... I, I went to... My mom, no, I went to... Um, let's see. Uh, Nicole's. We went to her wash house, and we cleaned our car. And GMC car, and blue car, and truck. And we cleaned out the car, and uh, wash uh, windows. Today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for Stoney. He is he comes so excited, wanting to always <laughs> dance and praise the Lord, and he is like so free. We are learning from Stoney how to be free in our place of worship, and we appreciate you, Stoney. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna win. <laughs> yes. Okay, he wants prayer, so let's stretch our hands in Jesus' yes. name. Even out there, stretch your hands to Stoney. Father, thank you for Stoney, Lord. What a childlike faith he has, Lord. I pray for him and his family, Lord God, and his father, God. And I just ask in the name of Jesus for restoration, God. Healing and wholeness in Stoney's body, mind, soul, and spirit. Father, thank you for his zeal, for his love for you, God. We just ask that you will bless him today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All right, Miss Sylvia. Thank you. As Laura taught us about prayer a couple weeks ago, she asked us to ask Holy Spirit um, and to listen and to encounter him. And this is what I heard, Pastor Jimmy. My son, I am with you. I'm walking with you through this trial, and I am well pleased with you because you are standing in faith in me and in my unlimited power. Because you are faithful, others will come to know me not only as healer, but as savior. I will do more than you can imagine or dare to ask during this time of breakthrough. You will reap a harvest for my kingdom. Your steadfast faith is most pleasing to me and I love you more than you know. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. That's what the word of God does. It encourages us. And the prophetic word is for encouragement, comfort, direction, and guidance. I know I'm missing consolation of comfort. Did I mention that? And that's what I've been receiving. And I believe, and, and I don't want to preach another message. <laughs> but this church believes in the prophetic word of God. It never clashes with the written word of God. It's rhema and it's logos. And the spirit and the word agree. Amen. That being said, these Wednesday nights and eventually Sundays and Sunday evenings and the various things we're going to do, we're going to believe for a greater move of God. A greater move of God. Not that we would be glorified, but that God would be glorified. Amen. As the prophet said, no flesh may glory in his presence. Let God be glorified. So let's not argue about, as some tend to do in this world today, argue about the manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Everybody can speak prophetically if you listen to God and communicate with him. We believe that, we teach it, we practice it, and we allow it. So for those of you at home, those of you who may be listening now or later on, understand this. We are faith people. We talk about what God does, not about what he can't do. Amen? So you, if you need a little uh, faith lift, you've come to the right place. Because we're going to press in together and get more from God than we've ever gotten before. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Pastor Lana? Okay, let's stand up and do one more song. Marcus, you know what we like to do?
Oh, when he rolls up his sleeves, he ain't just putting on a wrist. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. Journeys very soon, so you gotta be believing that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. You sing, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. God is an awesome God. Our God, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's give God praise tonight. Amen. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for what you are doing, Lord. We just continue to pray, Father God, for your healing touch, Lord God. We pray to today, tonight, Lord God. Whenever the people are watching, Father, I just pray in Jesus' name. We seal this time by the blood of Christ Jesus, Lord. I thank you for what you are doing in this house, Lord. Father, that I just hear like don't despise the small beginnings because Lord it is all about you Father so I just thank you and praise you for what you are doing here in this city in this state in this nation for you in Jesus name amen amen, amen. well we thank you for joining in we will continue to pray in those prayer requests and let us know when God answers your prayers, let us know the praise reports here because God is answering prayers in the name of Jesus as we see Pastor Jimmy's manifestation of healing and wholeness. So praise God for that. Tune in for Sunday at 10 a.m. Amen. As we continue to press in to what God wants for this time and season for his glory. All right, so God bless you. Thank you. We love you. And we continue to say, uh, be a blessing to someone in your family, your friends, your neighbors. Be a blessing. They are needing Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.